And I'm Isaac Switzer. And, and these are my dancing news. shoes. I, I didn't know you danced. Mm hmm. I do. That's because I only do it in the privacy of my own home, and Miss Trisha says I'm not ready to show my friends. Why not? We're your friends. We'll support you. I don't need your support. I need to perfect my step ball chains before the big gala on Friday. But we can help you. I mean, I took ballet as a kid. No! You don't understand. Dance is my life. But what about this show? I only do it because I can't afford to look in a mirror. You don't do it for the excitement or, or the joy of keeping the community informed? Because we get the privilege of being the connection between the larger world and the common citizen? No. Here's the news. Facebook is adding six emojis as alternatives to the thumbs up for expressing reactions to posts. The most popular one so far is a speech bubble saying, You're wrong! America forever! <laughs> Facebook is adding six emojis as alternatives to the thumbs up for expressing reactions to posts. This is significant, of course, because it brings us one step closer to me being able to use my <laughs> pics as reaction gifs. <laughs> Actor Shia LaBeouf was arrested for public intoxication over the weekend in Austin, Texas. I don't know why this is news. This happens literally every weekend. <laughs> Actor Shia LaBeouf was arrested for public intoxication over the weekend in Austin, Texas. But movie lovers will delight to hear it's only because LaBeouf was in Texas filming Holes 2, Bigger Holes. <laughs> The band Aerosmith has asked Donald Trump to stop playing their music at his events. In response to this request, Donald Trump said, Oh man, but I really love Aerosmith. And then Aerosmith said, Yeah, well we don't like you. And then Donald started crying, and it was this whole thing. But then they came to an agreement, which is that Donald is allowed to play Aerosmith alone in his car if he promises to cry for what a bad little boy he's been. <laughs> Justin Bieber's father tweeted in response to his son's penis picture. The tweet read, What are you feeding that thing? Hashtag proud daddy. Grounds for another Noah's Ark type situation? <laughs> Raven Simone has received criticism after claiming she would not hire anyone with a ghetto name to work for her. Good thing she has no reason to hire anyone to work for her. <laughs> Democratic Congressman Mark Takano posted a fake Craigslist ad in response to the Speaker of the House vacancy. Sources say it was all fun and games until John McCain responded over a dozen times. Said emails contained McCain in a turtleneck repeating the phrase, Let me at him, let me at him, let me at him, why ya yada. A woman in Indianapolis stopped a home intruder by cornering him using a traditional Japanese sword. Police reports confirmed that, yes, Wendy Wu, homecoming warrior, has grown up and moved to Indianapolis. <laughs> Donald Trump explained on CBS's Face the Nation this Sunday that he sometimes carries a gun because he feels better when armed. Because every wealthy white man deserves to feel safe from his walk to his, from his limo to his private jet. <laughs> and that's the news. It goes without saying that our country has had its fair share of problems lately. Very true, Kaylin. The news today is full of things that are just not great. Disheartening. Disappointing. Just yucky. <laughs> Guns are everywhere. Billionaires are buying elections like they're sham wows. Donald Trump is a person and my aunt has emphysema. <laughs> so many problems, so few solutions. Here to offer some all-natural remedies to our nation's issues is the, is the sweet old lady from down the street, June McPfeffercorn. Hello! I'm June McPfeffercorn, but you can call me June a purple lawn. Oh. Okay, Miss McPfeffercorn. So, tell us a little about your home remedies. Yes. If you live on my street and you hurt your feet, I'll give you some honey and extract of buckwheat. Um, wow, my feet hurt all the time. <laughs> well, that's very interesting, Miss McPfeffercorn, but what were your thoughts on how to apply your remedies to the defunding of Planned Parenthood? It is very simple. 
If you are a lady who seeks an abortion, I'll give you my mint and sage concoction. <laughs> um, okay, I love how organic that sounds, but I don't really see how that could be applied to what we're talking about. Dear, if you need me to raise you some money, I'll just go open up a stand at the farmer's market, honey. And then give the money from the farmer's market to... And to cure all your worries about the election, here's some goat paste for your pale complexion. Okay. What does that have to do with the election? I don't need any goat paste from your skincare collection. The middle class may be shrinking, so some hemlock root with berries is what I'm thinking. But how? Hey, now, Isaac, hang on for a second. Miss McFeverkorn, I don't really think we understand where you're going with this, so could you maybe expand a little more, or? First, please, call me Juniner. <laughs> and well, gun violence is pretty crazy, so may I offer some pollen from a daisy? <laughs> well, that's certainly interesting. Yeah, Miss McFeverkorn, here's the thing. We and if the police are being too militant, boil some pine cones from my cousin Millicent. When it comes to discussing the issue of race, I don't know anything. But I made some crepes. <laughs> okay, Miss McFeffercorn, how about you just keep your crepes to yourself? I don't know if that's what the country needs. I agree. All we really need is to grind up the feathers of a pregnant hen so we can make America great again. <laughs> okay, now you're really starting to sound crazy. So uh, give it up for June McFeffercorn, everybody. Call me Jeb! <laughs> With the media failing to equally distribute coverage among all the presidential candidates, many Americans are confused by the fact that Trump and Clinton are not already the nominees. Jim Webb, Lincoln Chaffee, Jim Gilmore, George Pataki. Even though I made up all of these names just now, wouldn't you believe that at least one of them could be a candidate? We here at Breaking News would like to introduce an independent candidate from right here in Boston. We now present to you the official campaign video for Sam Goldstein. Hi there, I'm Sam Goldstein, and I'm running for president. Now I know, I know, I understand, you probably have a lot of questions. But uh, I'm, I'm not gonna answer those questions right now. I'll probably have a question and answer session at the end of the video. I don't know, uh, come on. Well, what does it mean to run for president? Now that's a question that I've just asked myself. To me, it means I was born for something better. If I were to run for president, then I would be joining the ranks of the 43 best men that I've never known, even though I've claimed to live as each one of them in a fraction of my past lives. Who you call the presidents? I just call family. Men like this. Men like this. Men like this. And hopefully, Man like this. But forget about them. We're talking about me now. But what does president mean? Now it's questions like these that keep me up all night. Up all night drawing pictures. Drawing pictures that hopefully will help me answer questions like these that keep me up all night drawing these pictures. This is where I draw my pictures. I love to draw pictures. I draw them every single day. But, but maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Here, take a look. This is my bed. Every night I go to sleep in it. And every night I have the same dream, that I'm a harpy eagle sailing above the jungles of Belize, eating small primates. I'm the president of the jungle and the president of the food chain. There's no one who can stop me, who can take me down. No backstabbing Judases. No backstabbing Sam Goldsteins. Uh, I'm the apex predator. Uh, I'm the apex predator. I'm the king. I'm the king. <laughs> I'm the king. And every night, I do this until all my enemies are gone. And I am beloved by God. Uh, uh, and I do this every night until my head feathers have turned to snowy white. I wake up. <laughs> Never ever brush your teeth right before you eat a meal. That's why I just finished eating mere moments ago. Yeah. Now sometimes what I like to do is I like to take eggs and break them in this pot and I cook them up a little bit and then I mash them and then I eat them at this table. Yeah. I also love to draw pictures. 
<laughs> so that's about all you need to know. Any questions? Yeah, you. When you say you're running for president, do you mean running? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you for all your questions. We actually have Sam Goldstein in studio today. Sam, it's so good to have you. So, I noticed that you didn't actually discuss any of your intentions in office. Would you like to talk about some policies? Yes. No more recess. 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 We'll be right back no after these recess. messages. No more recess. No more recess. Make it say happy Borf Day, Kremlin. Kaylin, are you sure? Don't you want to be buried in a Jewish cemetery? Your corpse won't have that access to that kind of luxury burial ground if you have this tattoo. Yeah, don't worry about it. I got a note from my doctor. Right here, see? I am late for work today on account of being trapped in a swamp. Oh, whoops, wrong note. <laughs> okay. There's this one. Kaylin has permission from the Jewish people to receive a tattoo. Also, upon her death, please give her skin to Kremlin so that he, he may be wished a happy Borf Day. <laughs> Kaylin, I thought you said I would get your skin when you died. You do. You're Kremlin. <laughs> Did you not know that? I've been calling you it for years. But I thought Kremlin was just millennial slang for trusted authority figure. I it's millennial slang for old man butt. What? Yeah. This old thing? That old thing! Yeah. What? Oh, Kaylin, happy Borf Day. You keep me young. <laughs> After the most recent Democratic debates, we here at Breaking News wanted to zero in on the important issues. This week, immigration. How does it work? Where does it come from? What is it made out of? How well can it impersonate a drunk Jeb Bush at a campaign rally? And for that, we bring in our political correspondent, Jorge Ortiz. As always, it's a pleasure. Kaylin, Eric, it is nice to see you today. It's Kaylin. And Isaac. Yes, Kaylin and Jeremy. Craniums and Terry. <laughs> oh, uh, I see you've brought a guest today. Yes, very good. That is my brother, Pepe Ortiz. My name is Pepe Ortiz. Ha! Yes, he's right. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, Pepe. Now, we understand you're here to tell us about your tremendous story of crossing into this great land we call America. Mm. Mm. Yes, this is true. Pepe and I came here together. Yes, we crossed deserts. Mountains. Rivers. Jungle. Water. A sand. Plantations. Ice. Ice. Ice castles. Castles? <laughs> A wardrobe. Okay, uh, hold the phone. Jorge, where exactly are you from? We are from the Chronicles of Narnia, Cajo. Yes, my best friend was a talking squirrel named Erastusia and a centaur named Chris. It's true. <laughs> Pepe here was a pawn for 10 years. A, a pawn? A pawn is like a goat, you know? <laughs> I think he means fun. I said pawn. Come on, Michael. <laughs> we are here to talk about our entrance to the world. You see, we came here for a better jobs. I was a snake doctor in Narnia. Here, they say no! You must have a veteran experience. I think you mean, yeah, I think you mean veterinary, but proceed. They say, no joke without a visa. I go back to the world of I ask, Mr. Tomnes, where can I get a visa? He says, you need to build credit report, Jorge. What? That's great. I didn't know you could build credit over there. Do you have banks? No banks, but we have a tortoise who says, no money for you. <laughs> That's essentially a bank. There is only one way to fix these. And what might that be? 
Well, I saw. We must adopt the Canadian Federal Workers Program. Applicants are ranked and based on a point system. Included are American and French language skills, education, experience, adaptability, and job offers. It all equals out to 100 points. Oh, so it's a test based on your ability to work. Yes, exactly. And what exactly do you need to score on this test? Uh, she's just curious because she's still repeating the fourth grade. <laughs> well, to enter, you need a 67. That's a D plus, Caitlin. Then you're given a permanent residency visa. I can do that. What's the difference here in the U.S.? In the U.S., they have this green card, which is not green and confused, Pepe. Mm. <laughs> not to mention, it takes three American years, or my whole life three times in Narnia, to get one because all of the paperwork and the backlogs. <laughs> I do enjoy camping. <laughs> no, backlogs, Isaac, as in too much paperwork to be done in a timely manner. Yeah, whatever, fourth grader. <laughs> <laughs> if I may interrupt, we think that more importantly, we should talk about my centaur friend Chris, who should run for president. Mm, oh, yeah. You should see how he dances. He's like uh, catching lightning in a cove. I think the expression is lightning in a bottle. No, no in Nani, it's in a cup. He's a cup. He's a cup. He's a cup. He has the hips of a horse and four legs, so his salsa dance is very spicy. You should have seen him at Eratusa de Squirrel's Quinceañera. It was like a jalapeno with a bunch of legs. <gasps> Let us dance. Jorge and Pepe Ortiz, everyone. Isaac. Hey, you gotta admit it's catchy. Come on. Jorge and Pepe Ortiz, everyone. <laughs> Recently, Republican presidential candidate Ted Cruz held a hearing attacking the clean air and clean water safeguards that protect millions of American families. During the hearing, Senator Cruz relentlessly questioned the validity of global warming using skewed data to make claims that the Earth has not warmed at all in the past 17 years, but has instead gotten cooler. We now throw the story over to this week's man on the street, Kenny Ken Moran, Tri-State Metropolitan Area Salesman Extraordinaire. Hello, I am Kenny Ken Moran. You can call me either Kenny, Ken, or Mr. Moran. I prefer Kenny or Ken. Mr. Moran is my mother's ex-husband. Well, <laughs> we are on the streets today asking people about climate change. Republican presidential candidate Ted Cruz says it's not real. Well, it's pretty damn hot out today. Let's see what people have to say about it. <laughs> Ted Cruz said that climate change is not a thing. How do you feel about that? I think it's, that statement is insane, and I don't know how, how anybody could make a statement like that that See. reads and is intelligent. So you do believe in climate change? Absolutely. Do you believe in climate change? I used to. Right now, because we are, I think that the weather is, you know, is quite weird. I think, like, um, I don't know, because people say, like, because uh, maybe we have another ice, ice age. Is coming. Do you remember the hottest day of your life, and was it in Jersey? Uh, hottest day of my life? No, it was yesterday at that place that we were at. Oh yeah, it's hot. It was hot there. <laughs> where were you at? It's upstairs, hottest club in town. Upstairs where? Were the nice ladies? Yeah, lots of uh, chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in my life. I'll tell you why, it's because I'm sitting next to you. Hey! Oh, it's pretty damn hot over there. Yikes. No. Wow. 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 It's beautiful feathers. It's a beautiful dress. Yeah. I'll pay. I'll pay for the dinner. Hey, we won't eat any bird, right? You two, uh, you two together, or is this, uh, you just friends? Or? Oh, we're together. Oh, you're together. Yeah. Well, if, uh, if you ever need a third party, you know, you just let me know. I'm Kenny Camoran. Uh, final question. Would you play Dixile with the Ozone? I didn't even understand that. What did you say? Dixile? Dixile with the Ozone. <laughs> you know what I mean. Would I play Dixile with the Ozone? With the Ozone. Uh, sure, yeah. Absolutely. How about you? Would you play Dixile with the Ozone? I need a good night's sleep first, but then I think I would. Yeah. Couple of brave ladies over here. <laughs> All right. I would, that's all I'm saying. Are you gonna poke a hole in the ozone with our dicks? No, you're gonna, you know what I mean, dick out. You're yeah. not trying to hurt anyone, you just, you know. <laughs> yeah, I would do that. Every time I pull my dick out, someone gets hurt. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, mom, how's it going? No, I still don't have a job. Yeah, no, the movie theater didn't want to hire me. Oh, they said I kept flirting with the ladies, but what am I supposed to? No, I, I'm going to get a wife soon, mom. It's not. Come out dancing with me, Kenny Cam. My name's Kenny Cam Morans. I'm a tri-state metropolitan area salesman extraordinaire. I make lots of money. Yeah, okay, I still live with my mother, Christina Moran, but she's a beautiful woman. Why would I move out? Am I right? <laughs> Kenny Cam Moran, can I kiss you on the cheek? Yeah, well, for, for sure. I am Kenny Cam Moran. I stay much a part with an area assessment extraordinary. Let me tell you something. This day just got a little higher. Kenny Ken Moran, everyone. Thank you, Kenny, for letting us watch you discover your sexuality. We'll be right back. have been entertained and creeped out by the unauthorized and non-copyrighted characters of Times Square for years. It's something of a non-New Yorker rite of passage to snap a photo with Elmo, Batman, or that weird purple thing that keeps following me everywhere and trying to steal my identity. In recent years, topless women have added themselves to the ragtag bunch looking to make a few bucks on 42nd and Broadway. Several tourists have complained about having to navigate floppy boobs on their way to buy Lion King tickets. Which is why Mayor de Blasio has suggested implementing activity zones where nude women looking for a photo op have to restrict themselves to. This brings us to a segment we call Mouth to Mouth. Isaac, what do you think about designating activity zones for topless women in, to stand within in Times Square? Making topless women stand in activity zones is a preposterous idea. That reminds me of how we bad boys used to have to stand in a corner together at recess because we were too cool. It wasn't because we used to get bullied and it was easier for the teachers to watch us if we were all together. I think activity zones are an excellent idea. I wouldn't want my children that I lost in Times Square getting pestered by a pair of double D's to fork up five dollars. But your personal preferences don't coincide with the law. These women have rights. So do my eyes. The American public shouldn't be forced to see a woman's private parts against their will. And yet there's a he nipple on every Calvin Klein billboard in Times Square. Why am I allowed to go rollerblading shirtless in public every Saturday afternoon and you aren't? If I rollerbladed with no shirt and bra on, it would be mayhem for me and everyone watching. So you're saying everyone should have to put a shirt on when they rollerblade? The issue here isn't whether or not women should be allowed to go topless. There are more important problems than which Instagram filter to put on your areola. Women of color are still facing loads of racism and sexism daily, as well as discrimination in the workplace. But the issue still stands. Should topless women be roped off into activity zones? They're with Elmo. It can't be that bad. I bet my former children would love it in there. Yeah, but this Elmo is also drinking malt liquor at 2 p.m. And he smells like fish poop. Ah, it's New York. Everyone smells like fish poop. <laughs> what about the naked cowboy? He's showing everyone a little more than tasteful side boob. And back in his heyday, no one said a peep about activity zones. I say, free the nipple. Fair. But I'd like to keep him in a specific place, too. I don't want to turn around and find myself face to face with a pair of sock stuffed tidy whities Trust me, it's not as fun as it sounds. Well, my experience is very comfortable. But say these activity zones were implemented. Don't you worry about these Times Square characters getting run out of business? People avoiding them altogether? What's so bad about that? 
My main concern would be walking deftly past a zone and seeing Dora beating up Iron Man. Or Sleeping Beauty smoking a cig with a Winnie the Pooh that's just probably a homeless man and his dog inside. If we put all of these characters in one place, those who want to seek them out can, and those who want to avoid them can do that too. What if a little kid is trying to take their picture with Clifford and the boob girls keep getting in the way, or vice versa? That's a valid concern, Isaac. I say let's put all the characters in cages. That way you can pay to unlock which one you'd like to take a picture with. We'll treat them with just how they're acting, like animals. Hmm. That way the topless woman can still be topless and the individual can choose whether or not to look. We can call it the real Central Park Zoo. It's brilliant! It's official. We finally bought that zoo we've been talking about. We, we bought, bought a, a zoo! zoo. Wow. This has been our mouth to mouth. Come to our zoo soon. <laughs> We'd like to thank you all for joining us at Breaking News tonight. That's right. And in addition to our thanks, we'd also like to say a few apologies. To the writers, we're sorry we waterboarded your grandparents until you told us which of us is host number one and which of us is Glayin. <laughs> to the producers, we're sorry about demanding our contracts be reprinted in yellow ink. We're sorry we said your yellow ink smelled like piss and looked like ink. <laughs> to my nephew, I'm sorry I canceled your Christmas while you were staying at my house so that I could spend your iTunes gift card on some tunes. To my nephew, I'm sorry I lost you in that movie theater photo booth right after I kissed you on the lips in the movie theater photo booth. <laughs> to Cam Op A, I'm sorry I insisted that pepperoni nipples refer to one's nipples looking like an entire pepperoni pizza at the water cooler the other day. I still think I'm right, but I'm sorry I pressed so hard. I'm sorry I pressed so hard on my nipples. To God, I'm sorry about all the prank calls, and I'm sorry that every time my dentist gave me a bouncy ball at the end of my appointment, I ate the shit out of it. <laughs> I will not apologize to my dentist, who knew I was an idiot, but couldn't be trusted. And from all of us here at Breaking News, have a lovely evening. <laughs>